Hello, welcome to ToddFun.com where I do what's fun. Today's fun is we're going to finish that hot tub controller uh, hack um, and make sure that it's functioning. We got to hook a few things up in the test bed here. If it works, then we'll put it together in a little box and take it over and test it with the hot tub. So to the bench. For a quick recap, uh, that's the controller that we're going to be uh, putting a new brain on. Over here, that's going to be the new control brain. Um, it's in Celsius, but once you set it for your hot tub, you're going to forget it. Uh, I'm going to use this. I, I salvage lots of stuff. This is a little barrel connector for 12 volts. And over here, I have a uh, salvage 12 volt supply off of something. Who knows what? I got box, boxes of those things. And then I, I got a box here that's, I think it's from a cable box or something that I t tore apart and kept the, I said, that's a good box. And this will fit in here perfectly with some holes and stuff uh, for the outputs and the wires. This will be the temperature sensor. I was going to think about using the sensor that was in the hot tub, but this is a 10K. The one in the hot tub is like a 30K. So right now it's set to come on at 28 Celsius and off at 30. And right now it's at 27, so it, it, it won't turn off until it gets to 30. So if I hold this temperature sensor, it'll climb up to 30 and turn off. There, it turned off. Now it won't turn back on until it gets under 28. Granted, those will be different for a hot tub, but here I got some uh, spray. You can see the temperature's dropping. And as soon as it gets under 28, it'll turn back on again. And so any hysteresis can be set for the hot tub. This is going to be the boiler test, of course. And this unit with that controller over there, with the brain, with, with the uh, physical controls of this, should be able to control the temperature of this pot. So I was going to keep the circuit kind of simple here. Uh, this represents uh, the temperature controller from China. It's got uh, a relay control here, and it's isolated. Uh, and it's just going to provide a path through a pass through path for five volts to swing around and go back. This is the temperature sensor that tells it you know, that you'll set your temperature against, and it's 12 volts external by its own. With the five volts over here, the five volts comes up to a switch. The switch will either be off position, meaning no five volt signal anywhere. If the if the switch is in this normal normal position over here, it'll come over. If there's demand for heat, it'll pass back through and provide five volts. To the heater and to the low motor speed uh, um, transistor array. If the 5 volts could switch over to this rail and that would come down and provide 5 volts to the transistor array for just the motor high speed control. Uh, the switch I dug out of my junk drawer just has those three positions and I'm going to simplify it by cutting in uh, the switch here into this position. This is where the original switches were for talking to and controlling the temperature and so forth but they don't work anymore as you know. Um, I will have to widen this hole a little bit. Uh, the only thing that happens is I'll be cutting a trace that goes up to this LED that I took off already. This was the red LED that said it was the heater was on or not. But the heater on and off is controlled by the temperature board now, so we don't need that no more. The reason I want to put the switch here is because originally these two switches have paths that go directly through this uh, RJ12 cable down to here to talk to the controller. So I'm going to reuse those paths. There's one here, and then there's one here. And based on which way you have that switch, you're going to take 5 volts off of this, and you're going to send it down to uh, the transistor array here, or here, depending on which side uh, you want the switch to be on. And so I'll be reusing this signal going down here. Real quick look at the uh, at the box here. I got it mounted on the front. And I got all the wiring on one side, so it's easy to put the back on. Uh, we have the temperature coming in and hooked up. We have the five volts at the relay switches, and then we have the 12 volts for powering the controller and uh, a little bit of hot glue, so these wires don't chafe on anything. I didn't have any uh, grommets that fit these, and uh, then the barrel jack. So, yeah. Put the back on and that's a sealed unit and there's the uh, temperature controller all in its little box and fired up and ready to go. We got all the wiring done. Let's take a look first at the head unit. Um, it of course has an RJ12 that jacks in up here so it can be done separately. 
it's got the three positions and we pulled power five volts from here goes to the center and based on the switch position it'll either go in five, five volts will go nowhere or it will go over to controlling the allowing five volts to go to the to this for it to decide whether or not there's heat or not and a low speed motor or we flip it the other way and it'll put through this wire it will go down and say oh just go back to here and sh turn on the jets and ignore the heater and that's what the head unit will do it also will continue to con show the Fahrenheit up here because that is still working um, though it's not a part of this controller it will at least give you feedback on your tub uh, this we've already seen so we'll put that aside on this board we um, we have the RJ12 from the head unit coming in here but this is the jack for the uh, uh, for the 5 volt feed through to the temperature controller and that 5 volts either for the high speed jets coming through here or or for the temperature for the heaters coming through here they both go through some traces right here and I did some delicate surgery here so that these wires no longer go over to this board the way they used to I cut them and rerouted them through these yellow wires here and now I control where those 5 volts go directly onto this transistor array um, and then you'll see I've tapped two together here because I want these two I want the high speed or the low speed motor to come on the same time the call for heat comes on so those are together on 5 volts and then this this one is the high just the high speed motor and I don't care I'm bypassing the temperature control at that point um, and the way I do that delicate control of course you saw me in an earlier video cut the traces behind this chip so this chip no longer got commands from anything and then to control how the 5 volts comes from here from that head unit and from the temperature controller I followed where that RG12 comes in and for one of them it traces over this way and I drilled a hole with a drill bit right there that cut that trace I just keep some of these uh, orifice drill bits around and it's real quick just to drill out a trace and so that's the end of that trace that trace can't go any farther to the rest of the circuitry here but I then jumpered it with one of those yellow wires right here uh, behind the cut over to where I wanted it likewise um, for wire number three off of the RJ12 I did a bodge wire over to that uh, jack that goes over to the five goes over to the temperature controller then it comes back I bodged over to the another part of the trace and then over to where the yellow wire is the the hacked yellow wire and then I drilled out right there I drilled out the original trace so it can't go anywhere plus I drilled out one other spot uh, I cut that number three wire um, yeah I think it's down into here at any rate that number three wire that comes from this RJ12 can no longer get anywhere on this board other than these yellow wires that I have so it's it's the, it's rewired to have a new brain uh, yet all the other functionality still works that it was working uh, everything's rewired and we're ready for doing the test um, it's really late though so I'm gonna get some sleep tonight and uh, there's nothing to do tomorrow except for run the test okay this is the setup it took quite a bit to get it set up because it has to simulate the tub uh, forgive me for the mic and the audio because I'm not gonna try and shoot this with my mic because sometimes my mic just doesn't work and so because I only get one chance at turning this on once I'm going to shoot with just the plain audio from the camera now normally I wouldn't do this big of an elaborate test unless the device was just really rare or complicated and, or just had to work this is just a hot tub and I'm only shooting all this elaborate setup because for the video uh, normally I would just stick this in the hot tub and see how I did but let's talk about a few pieces we have two lights the small one is for the low motor speed represents the low motor speed the large represents the high jet motor speed the only one should come on at a time the salvaged carry kettle pot is the heater essentially the bathtub with the heater no water is going to be pumped around of course I got that just wired directly into the power that this thing will provide on demand for heat this will decide uh, whether or not heat is needed uh, based on the temperature probe that's in the water that's cold water right now and then there's a head unit 
uh, which will have the switch, the three-way switch we discussed earlier. Uh, the temperature will always read incorrectly uh, because the temperature is going to is got just a just a resistor dangling down here saying it's it's 82 degrees. Um, that temperature will work in the hot tub though because the tub does have its own temperature probe. And uh, just for a bit of sanity, this variac will let me control how much power goes to the heater. Is if we put 110 into that little cup of water, it would just it would just boil and spit instantly. And we kind of want to just see it come up to temperature slowly. Uh, now everything gets power from uh, the control board, from the relays on the control board, with the exception of the temperature control. It has its own 12 volt power supply. Let's take a swing around back. So in the back here we have uh, a, a power. It's just just a I just cobbled together an outlet that gets its power from this board, goes up underneath. Also coming out of there in that gray wire is power coming over to this cobbled together outlet that just lets the variac get power. And that way the variac can control uh, the lo a lower voltage to the heater. Um, pretty much everything else is, is, is understandable I guess. And just so you know, all this is hooked up through that isolation transformer uh, for safety. And I, when that switch is on, then everything comes live. I got the temperature set to uh, from 38 to 40. That'll be just over 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 104. It should do some hysteresis between the two. Currently 9.8 Celsius, so it's cold water. And uh, you'll be able to see me when if I adjust the variac, which is currently set to zero and in the on position, and everything's plugged in. Uh, this is set to not provide any signal to the board, so nothing should come on. Uh, when we apply power. Okay, this is it. One time shot for this. Okay, I pause for a moment while I make sure I've done everything right. This is where we see sparks and craziness, so I'm going to flip on the isolation transformer now. Isolation transformer came on. We do see that this is testing itself and it will quickly decide if it has any issues. It thinks it's 82 degrees. I'm going to bypass the flow control sensor, that will of course work fine. And that will essentially just helps it proof out that the flow sensor is fine. Uh, neither light came on. Of course there's no heat, we don't even have the variac on yet. Uh, let's test in the up position the high speed motor should come on, which is this light. Cross your fingers. Oh god, my hand's too close to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. We got the high-speed motor running. Um, that would mean just the jets are on, the heater, uh, the low-speed motor is not on, and the heater's not on. If I turn this up, nothing is flowing. I can see the meter down here. Nothing's on. It doesn't even have power. Actually, this power light will come on. Um, if I can do a little bit more, this is a little power light. They'll switch on right here. If uh, when this gets power. Okay, so let's turn the high-speed jets off, and the temperature is currently 10 degrees Celsius. It's going to have to heat until it hits 40, at which time it should turn off. Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay, the low-speed motor did come on. That means that it would be pumping at low speed. We do have power over here at the, at the uh, Variac. Uh, we're not heating, of course, because this is set really low, and we don't want to just put 110 volts right into this little kettle, or it'll just, you know. So let's just bring that up real slow. We should see this needle, if you can see a little bit, you should see it start coming up with the voltage. And, uh, and then you might start seeing bubbles over here. Okay, the voltage is at about 30 now. I'm looking in the can to see if I see any bubbles. Take it up to 50 volts. Okay, we're at 50 volts. I wonder if we could see down in there a little bit. Don't see anything. I haven't tested the kettle to make sure it even works. I'm going to turn the voltage up to 80. It might take a certain amount of voltage just to overcome the resistive element, but I would think it would start heating even at a lower voltage. Okay, I'm going to bring it up. There's 100 volts. 
it must be working because our temperature's up to it's climbing pretty fast now and yes I do see swirling down in there and we're coming up to 25 so 100 volts is bringing that up pretty quick I'm gonna probably well I don't know if I want to back it off a lot but I'm gonna back it off to about 60 volts that'll slow it down a little bit but it's gonna reach hot tub temperature here pretty quick 33 now it's slowed down a little bit because because uh, I turned the voltage down on the variac what if you can see that good I'm not sure you can it's 35 volts right now uh, 35 36 Celsius now so we did we did slow the boil down a little bit we're almost coming up to shut off now so it's almost hot tub temperature right now just a few more degrees 39 39.5 there and she turned off there we go right on schedule so the low speed motor turned off and the uh, and the heater turned off so there's no power over here anymore and we're at exactly we're a little over 40 right now we're at 41.4 and it won't turn on again until it gets to 38 so just sort of to simulate that let's throw some ice in there and we should just see that low speed motor come on and the heater come back on again the heater light is going to indicate of course with the red and that is working so kudos to that so I'll throw some ice in here don't know if I have enough ice to bring the temperature down though That eh, temperature came back on. Yep. It might drop to 36 with that ice. And now it's going to have to heat that back up again. Sweet! I think everything's working just fine. Time to test the hot tub. Ooh, it's having a challenge. Let's give it some voltage. Let's crank it up to the full 110 and watch this thing go. There's 110. 10. That'll bring the temperature up quick. We got to overcome that ice. Thirty nine, forty, and she turned off. <laughs> okay. I know you want to see it. I know you do because I do. Let's uh, let's ramp this thing up to something that will boil. ninety nine oh just about boil so ninety nine celsius okay well let's let's let her, let her rip tater chip ninety six Oh, we're going to come over 97. Oh, we're going to bubble over. We're bubbling at 98.4. Will she shut off? Will I get shut off? Oh, we got shut off. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's cool. Well, you don't want to do that to your hot tub. Well, I'm going to wrap it right here real quick because it is the Easter holiday weekend and everyone's just too busy to go uh, get together and, and set this up and start running it. So... This will finalize this part. The next video will be it in the hot tub working, but I don't want to wait two days for this hot tub to come up to temperature from tap water. So I have a little treat in, for you if, you if you come around and watch that. And that treat is the first Maker Fair that was in, uh, that I first Maker Fair ever, I was invited to because of something I made. And that something will heat a hot tub really fast and I still have it and I don't think my audience here has ever seen it um, if you go back far enough in my history you'll find it but we'll see you and uh, we'll see that hot tub come up the temperature real fast and then we'll see this unit functioning and that'll be the uh, last video in this uh, in this series so
See you then. Thumbs up. Thanks for joining.